Oh, I can have yours as well to the side. They give me plastic welding skills another go. I've really bought the shroud of this fan. Got some old scrap plastic. An old uh, protein shaped plastic scoop and cut it up. And just welded it in place. To fill that big hole up that was there. And knock some new vent holes. That's perfect now. <laughs> That's what old Frankenstein. No cracking rattles. Oh, the live was all fixed. Cleaned it up. Did some more welding. Much better now. And um, this old burnt and extension cord served me well, especially at the old joint. It's um, been a pretty good cord, but lately I think, I remember years ago actually, we plugged something into it, it was hard to plug in. So we just forced it in as hard as we could. I think the old dad did this. He just plugged something into it, it wouldn't go in, so he forced it in really hard until it snapped in. And ever since it's that, it was um, a bit intermittent. Like I wasn't always working this cord. So I, I forgot about it until about yesterday and I started using it again. I plugged with vacuum cleaner and other things into it and noticed I wasn't working. I wobbled the uh, plug in the socket and it would work intermittently. And I would push it in hard and it would stay in and it would work. And I found um, the active clip was pushed and crushed like that. It's supposed to look like this. The pin goes in there. As you can see the active one, it pins hit that and forced it and bent it like that. That's why it was always a bit of an arky and sparker and all that. It had loose connections in there. So this was one of the last companies to make Australian made extension cords. In the 1998 or something, I think was the last year, then they shut down. You know, it's all been Chinese made extension cords ever since. Bit of a crack in it anyway, so I'm going to keep this cord. We'll place the plug and sock on it and use it for other appliances and things. I might even clean it up and make a custom IC extension out of it. We'll see. You can see how they made it. It's got a clip in there and a cord um, strain relief for a smaller gauge, a uh, smaller size cord to go in there, the flex, a smaller flex that goes in there. And this washer pushed against that, which um, tapers and crushes those uh, fingers and bites that cord there. I think he's had a good strain relief. Then they just push this over it. And the pins went inside there. They pushed it in, and that just uh, they used some sort of glue, the looks of it. That um, some of the PVC glue was just melted into the plastic, and that's it. Fuse it together. That's a different alternative to moulding. I remember this had ants and everything living in it at one time. I remember there was always ants and stuff coming out of this. You see, I've cleaned it and cleaned it and cleaned it. I remember that. <laughs> Anyway, that's a pretty interesting failure made there. That's why it was always intermittent this cord. This side, you can see where they've crimped it, but they've crushed the wiring in those heat stakes and the same with the active one. Even the air slightly pinched in there. Yeah, they've pinched it in between these heat stakes. The neutral one, that's all melted it. They had that pinched in between here and the heat stake when they put it together. Well, they're a bit rough there, weren't they? For something made in Australia. I expect they said it from something made in China, but from Australia? I don't know. Yeah. Interesting technique they had of done that. They just Sort of mould and actually just roll it up together like that. It's a pretty uh, interesting way to make a plug and plug and um, socket. Interesting they had done that. The V81361, I think some model number with this. Cat, uh, can't remember the cat numbers are ripped off now. But yeah, it's a um, pretty much uh, cracked up this core, anyway. That'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.